It's been a long process to get to this point, but there's finally a concrete driveway around the workshop and proper drainage. I'm so excited to not have to deal with flooding and a giant mud pit every time it rains. Though I think Doofy's gonna miss this a bit. Okay, so it's like really muddy back here. <laughs> and Doofy is living his best life. Look at this. Oh. Oh. Don't drink that, don't drink that water. First thing to do was grade the land, compact it down, and clear out any excess dirt. During the prep work, I spent most of my time in the workshop, so I didn't capture as much as in the past. Once the ground was ready, trenches were dug for the drains, but then we got a week's worth of rain. Dufu was pretty stoked to have another mud run. I'll let him have his fun because it'll be way different once the concrete is poured. After the week of rain, it took another week for the ground to dry up enough to continue working. The drains were placed and certified in location. Then the trenches were backfilled, forms were placed, and rebar was laid throughout. During grading, a bit of the foundation of the wall was revealed. At this spot near the back, that foundation would be fairly revealed. So a form was placed to build a small curb out of concrete to conceal it. A bunch of road base was spread around and compacted down as the final layer before concrete. Any remaining prep work was completed and then we were just about ready to pour. The day before, I put some plastic wrap on the bottom of the doors to protect them from splattering concrete or messy handprints as they would have to be moved back and forth a few times during the pour. Okay, time for the big day. They started early and worked fast. The first truckload of concrete was poured at about 7.30 a.m. and they were wrapping up and heading out at noon. They started from the back and worked towards the front. The trickiest part of this was getting all the slopes right from the high points to the drains. The permit requirements made the plans a bit complicated. It's pretty mesmerizing watching the crew work. They pour concrete every day, so they work like a well-oiled machine. The long corridor driveway that leads towards the front was the most complicated part. There's a drain every 10 feet, which means there's a high point between each drain. So instead of being just a simple flat slab, it's like a bunch of square funnels lined up next to each other. If you ride a bike or skateboard down the center, it's like riding over a bunch of small waves. Because this area wouldn't be very easily accessed until after the concrete had time to set, they had to screed and do the first round of finishing as they poured. They swapped over to the other side of the building before finishing that stretch so they didn't block themselves in. Once it's poured and screeded, you have to wait a bit for the concrete to set before finish work. This area included the walkway to the workshop door and a landing step for the guest house door. The last bit of concrete was used to refill what was cut out to dig a trench for the drain line. Here, you can get a good idea of where the drains are located. A bit of water was starting to pull up at the valley where there's a drain entrance. Then, it was a race against time to do all the finish work before it cured. There's a bunch of different steps that they do to work the concrete to its finished look. Before it could be walked on, a wide trowel with extension poles worked the surface to give it a rough finish. After a bit, when it had some time to cure, they could start hand troweling the surface. Big boards were placed to disperse their weight. At the same time, joint lines were created that worked to reduce the number of cracks that happened later on. Also at the same time, the form for the curb on the left was removed so that surface could be finished. Earlier in the day, an overcast sky kept it cool and slowed the drying process. However, that didn't last, and a radiant sun worked against our favor. That's okay though, because these guys know what to do. They call this thing the helicopter. With a splash of water on the ground, it works the surface and makes it possible to finish properly. When all the trial work was done, 
the very last thing was to lightly brush it with a wet, soft bristled broom. That gives the entire thing a uniform look. It just makes it look so good. The other side of the building got the same finishing process, though because it was more in the shade, it didn't need the helicopter treatment. After all the finish work was done, and while the concrete was still curing, the boss lady and I made our mark near the workshop entrance. We forgot to do this when the foundation was poured, so we made sure not to forget this time. We stayed off the concrete for a few days to let it cure, then let Doofy inspect for his review. I think he likes it. Oh. <laughs> Oh, and he's gone. He's so fast. Come here. Chicka, chicka, chicka. <laughs> Oof. Sit. Ha. Good boy. Okay. Go. A few days later, the drain covers were placed, the rest of the forms were removed, and some dirt was moved to finish off the grading. I gave it about a week and a half before seeing how it worked as a driveway. It's been a long time since I've been able to drive my truck back here. Also, it's going to be nice to not track dirt and mud all over the place anymore. This was the last major step for the workshop build. Now, it's just a matter of tying up the loose ends and finishing some bureaucratic stuff. I have so many plans for the inside of the workshop that I can't do until after the final inspection. We also have a bunch of plans for the backyard that have been on hold for the same reason. This process has been long way too long. But in hindsight, it's been very rewarding. I've learned so much about building and construction and was able to do quite a bit of the work along the way. I'm super happy with how this building looks inside and out, and I'm excited for all that is yet to come. Okay, that's it for now. See ya! Thank <laughs> you.